In this video, we're going to be talking about an introduction to HTML email. Now, this presentation came out of a consulting um, presentation we did for a church, and uh, they graciously said, hey, we, we, we feel like this, value, this information is valuable to lots of different churches. Um, so they allowed us uh, to share this, and they invested in uh, kind of like polishing up this material so that it would be very useful for uh, the entire rock community. And so we highly appreciate that. And that's a piece of, of what we hope to do at Triumph is our goal and our, our strategy um, and our core value is to make all rock churches better, not just the rock churches that we work with. And this is a, a good example of us wanting to meet that commitment, but also being able to work with other churches that see the value and um, not only getting their answers um, from, uh, from us, but also being able to share those answers with the entire uh, rock community. So the first thing I want to say is simply put, HTML emails are hard. Uh, it's not an easy task, this, and it's not specific to rock. Just HTML emails in general are hard. And that really comes down to the fact that each of the email clients that are out there um, are very opinionated in how they treat the HTML inside these emails and have very, very different rendering engines for, for that. For example, one of the hardest uh, uh, email um, readers to, to work with is Outlook. Actually, is probably one of the most common too, uh, especially for people at work. Um, so when Microsoft went into Outlook and decided, well, how should we render, what rendering engine should we use for HTML emails? Uh, you might have thought they would have turned to Internet Explorer, and in, at one point, a long time ago, it was. Or you might think, well, maybe, no, no, it's not Internet Explorer. It must be Edge, right? That's the new one. Um, but that is not the case. Um, at, this, at the time of recording, the HTML rendering engine inside of Outlook was actually Microsoft Word. Um, in some, a lot of cases, that just doesn't make a lot of sense, but it most likely has to do in the fact that they wanted to be able to have an editor for that too. And, you know, Word can do HTML, probably not, again, the best place to do your HTML, but it does do that. So because of each of these, you know, situations with the email readers, and, and, and Outlook is not the only one. Gmail does do some weird things, and they all do some weird things. So that's what makes this really, really hard. So there's two successful strategies in working with HTML emails. Um, the first, well, the two, the two strategies really are you can build your own templates or you can buy the templates. Now, when I say buy, that really translate that into working with a rock partner to build the template for you. Um, or you can build them yourself. Um, those are the, the only two really options you have. I'd say if you if you build it, um, there's some things you need to know. The best tip is code like it's 19.99, and that's really not joking. Okay, you really have to make HTML as you would have done in 19.99. Now, some people would say, well, gosh, there's these sites like really good emails. Um, they have these really great looking templates. And, you know, why can't I use these? Why, why does Brock not support this? Well, the fact is it does. Um, you can go to the site. You can download the HTML for these emails. You can copy and paste it right into Rock, and you can hit send, and it'll come through just as it does here. And that works. But the hard part is taking these really good emails and making templates out of them and making it so that you can put dynamic text in there. You can use it in the, in the HTML wizard. Now that difficulty is not unique to Rock. If you take these same really good emails and convert them into MailChimp templates, you're going to have the same problems. You're going to run into the same challenges. Um, and that's because, again, you have to write this to 1999. And doing that statically, as shown in these, is difficult but not impossible. But what's even harder is when you, you need to make it so that it's dynamic at the same time. But I'm going to show you and tell you about some tricks that I think can help. So specific tips as you make your own templates. First off, think of tables instead of divs. So back in the old days, there were no divs. Everything was tables. 
and people use tables to make their layouts. Now today that's a very bad thing. Like people who do that get ridiculed. But when it comes to email, that's not something you ridicule. That's something that you just have to do. So if you saved some of the emails that you get from maybe Apple or uh, your favorite e-commerce site, and you were to actually go look at the markup, you're going to see tons of tables inside that. Um, and again, if that was a web page, you would laugh and say you're doing it wrong. But when you do it in HTML email, you're actually doing it right. Other things like your colors have to be um, six digits in, of uh, hex, not three. Uh, you want to use padding instead of margins. You want to use CSS version two instead of CSS version three, HTML four instead of five. Uh, use background colors instead of just background uh, HTML attributes instead of CSS. So HTML attributes is really saying use the style tag, not CSS um, classes. And those style tags should, is, uh, should be inlined. Um, so don't have a style block at the top. You need to inline that CSS and bring it down to every element. So instead of having a style block at the top that said paragraphs are font size 12, you need to go to every paragraph tag and say style equals 12. Uh, good news, Rock has inlining built in um, now. It's a, a relatively new feature, and you need to enable it on your transport. But once you do that, it'll take your style tags and it'll automatically add um, all the style tags to the paragraphs for you, which is pretty cool. And when using tables, don't forget to use border equals zero, cell padding zero, cell spacing equals zero. Uh, to make sure that they don't have extra spacing in it. So again, it's like going back to the old days of HTML, which weren't really the great days of HTML. On top of that, just know that buttons with HTML emails are really, really difficult to, to achieve. Um, in a, and it's, it's a little bit limiting in what you can do. Tip though, you can use the code that Rock uses to make buttons inside your template. So if you use the wizard, just drag the buttons in, you're fine. Like we've worked hard to get a, a good pattern in there. Um, and if you need to put a button inside of a template, I would recommend just go into the wizard, copy a button in, copy that markup, paste it into your template. And that's a, a great way to make sure you're doing it right. Another thing that you need to know is like when, what can I do in, inside of HTML email? Uh, and there's this great website, can I email? Um, there's other ones for websites. Um, but this is one specifically for HTML emails. And basically you go to this site, you kind of type in what you want to do and it tells you, uh, what percent of email readers, uh, can support that feature. Okay. So that's very powerful. If you want to say, Oh, I want to do video right inside my email. We'll type in video. It'll tell you, um, that that's probably not a good idea because only, um, Apple devices really support that. Well, another advanced tool, and this is kind of another, you know, kind of showing you the our uh, tools of the trade, our little bag of tricks, kind of opening up that bag and just sharing it publicly and, and, um, helping everybody is if you want an advanced way of doing this, use MJML. So MJML is a tool from MailJet and it's a, a kind of like a templating language. And so over here, you can see that instead of saying HTML, you just say MJML. And instead of saying just body, you say MJ body. And then the section column image and button. Now remember I said like buttons are incredibly hard. Well, if you use an MJ button, it's incredibly easy. And then what you do is you take this MJML instead of HTML to MJML, you compile it and it turns it into gobs and gobs of, of correctly, uh, written, uh, HTML for you. Okay. So that's really cool. That's really powerful. Now you still have to go make that a rock template. Okay. So there's still challenges uh, for sure, but this is kind of a shortcut if you want to, you know, make your templates and it's a tool that we use and there's, MJML tools that you can, um, use so like an, as an editor and you can use visual studio code if you want. Um, so some pretty cool stuff, but I would say this is the advanced, um, definitely not, um, for the faint of heart. Now your other option, if all of that, I just said kind of made you go, your eyes go cross. Don't worry, just engage a partner to create a general purpose template. Now, before you go out and do that, what I would do is you, as you engage with a partner, ask them to see some of the templates that, um, they've created in the past, because again, this is hard. Um, you gotta have a lot of experience doing this 
And um, it's, it's not something that you should just say, well, just make me an HTML template, email template. You should really go look at their previous work, maybe even ask them to send you um, an email with that template in use so, so that you can see it. So let me give you some other tips, not specific to the templates necessarily, but how do you make good looking emails? So some of the things that you know I would recommend is, first around images, you need to make sure that your images are properly sized. Now, two reasons for this. One is a improperly sized email can break your template. Um, so that's a good reason right there, it can make a mess. Second, I've seen a lot of people who had some really nice templates, but someone put an image in there that was way too big. I've even seen 12 meg images um, being sent out in HTML email. Now, that doesn't actually get sent to the email client, but as soon as they open it, it's downloading it. And if you're on mobile, that's like really hard on um, your uh, device. And if that, H if that large image was actually stored on your rock server, it's really gonna put some stress on it too. So make sure that your images are properly sized. You should also make sure that your templates are forgiving and allows for images with the wrong size. So you want your images to be sized right, but if something were to go wrong, you want your template to be kind of forgiving and not to like make a mess if the image is not the right size. And so there's some um, styling that you're gonna wanna put in there to make that forgiving. In general, uh, we recommend that the images should be about twice the size of the parent um, area, and that's for retina devices or high resolution displays. Um, in the Apple world, that's called retina. Um, and again, this assumes that your template supports this forgiveness of, of it being twice as big. Um, and that's going to really give you some really nice, crisp um, images, especially on mobile devices. Um, uh, so many people are on high resolution displays now, whether it's their monitor at work or their laptops. Uh, or, but definitely their mobile phones and tablets are all that high resolution. And so uh, you can really notice the difference um, when you make the images twice as big. Another thing that we highly recommend is test your emails, especially your large ones. If you're sending an email out to a large number of people, test it. Uh, one of the best tools for that is Lipness. Um, and what you basically do is when you get your litmus account, you'll get an email address that you send your test emails to, and then it's going to basically show you what they look like in every single client out there. And you can choose how many you choose to display. I'm only showing you a few here, but you can obviously with this one, there's, there's actually some issues. Um, and so this allows you to catch those issues before people start e calling you back and saying, Hey, your email looks really weird. And at that point it's too late. You can't fix it. Um, so these tools are very, very nice. Um, they're, they do cost, uh, you know, money that you got to pay money for this. Uh, Lipness is not cheap. It's a hundred dollars a month is the basic plan. Um, but if you're sending a lot of large emails and you really want them to look right, this is a good tool. Now, definitely if you're interviewing a partner, you should ask them, do they test all the templates that they create in Litmus? Um, and at Triumph, we definitely have a Litmus account. Um, yeah, it's expensive, but we're making these templates for you know churches. We want to make sure that we're testing them like crazy through every single client. And so well worth it to us. Um, there are other services out there. They're not as good as Litmus. And um, they cost about the same. Some of them are just a little bit cheaper, but you know honestly, uh, Litmus is the is the premier package. So it's a good, a good tool to use. Also another tip, provide pre headers. Um, so pre headers are a great way to increase your open rates. So basically inside the wizard, you have this little email uh, preview that you can type in text that will be displayed inside the email client. Um, so uh, the email client shows you who it's from the subject line and underneath that, is the email preview preheader. So this field that I'm showing you here though in Rock will only show up if your template supports it. So there's a little bit of code you just need to paste into your template right under the body tag. This is all documented in the Rock manuals. So it's really easy, just copy it from there, paste it into your template, but you wanna make sure your templates all have that. Now this is just a point of clarification. 
some of the templates that ship out of the box in Rock don't have that enabled. And you might ask, well, why, why is that? Um, the pre-headers are a fairly newer feature. They, they, they weren't in the you know, original versions of Rock where the, the templates were you know, put in, the original templates were put in. And it's difficult for the core team to actually go back and modify those templates because they don't know if you've modified them yourself and they might hurt your changes if they just go shove in the pre-header. So, you know, maybe in the future we'll see some new templates come out um, by the core team. But in the meantime, you can just go add that little bit of code yourself and it's really easy. Okay, so how can we spice up some of our designs? So definitely we need a good template, we know that. Let's assume we have a good template. What are some things we can do um, with our template to make it even more, um, give it ways that it can pop? Uh, one thing you could do, you might say, well, you know, I wanna have videos. I wanna have direct video playback right inside the email. Unfortunately, this is not well supported by email clients. Um, this will only work about 47% of the time and that's uh, using the Can I email as of um, the time of the recording, uh, September of 2021. So don't really recommend this. Um, right now, Apple devices typically can do this. Many other clients can't. Um, you can do video links though, like Rock Core supports that. You just drag in a video element, provide it the YouTube URL, the Vimeo URL, or just a URL that you know where you have it. And it will auto-generate the thumbnail for you, putting the little play button on there for you, which is really nice. Now, but again, that's not embedded right in the email. That's a really just an image that you click and then you go view the, the, the video. It's nice, it's very helpful, but it's not playing it live inside of the email reader. But don't worry, there's another option, okay? So animated GIFs are another option. Um, so what we're showing you here is an email from Elevation Church. And it's a very simple email, actually, if you look at it. It's, it's nice, it looks very nice, but the template is, is, is fairly basic, but that image at the top, man, it, it really definitely um, draws your attention. Now, animated GIFs, you might think, oh gosh, those are kind of hard to make. And actually, they can be, but there are, there are easy ways. We highly recommend easygift.com. Uh, this is a free tool. It's a website you go to. You upload all of your images and you tell it how long you want to pause between images and it makes the animated GIF for you. So if we really deconstruct this animated GIF, it's really a set of like four to six still images that are just being cycled through every roughly two seconds. And using this tool, you can do that literally in a matter of a minute or two. So, uh, don't feel like this is out of reach, and it really makes your emails like pretty cool. So the church that we were doing this presentation for, and and who kind of chartered, you know, the creation of this um, uh, Cedar Creek has some really great design. In fact, if you look at their emails and a lot of their series art and a lot of their communication uh, graphics, it's actually some of the best graphic design out there. Um, they're really on point with their graphic design. And I'd say this is a great looking email. I mean, the template's a little plain, but the it actually really makes the, the graphic design really pop. Um, and so this is a great email, love this email. But if we took just a few minutes to add, uh, turn this into an animated GIF, what I did is I just did quickly in Photoshop, uh, made six different versions of that image and we just rotate them through. And so we're just kind of going through the six different images um, to show that. So pretty interesting how you can just make a quick animated GIF and it can make it much more dynamic. And I think when most people ask me, well, how do these people get these um, videos that actually play inside the email? It's not really a, a video. It's just really an animated GIF, um, which is pretty neat. Okay. So I think this is like the best tip on how to make your, your, um, your HTML emails really engaging. So another tip I would recommend is just really monitor your analytics. Know what's working and what's not. Rock has some great email analytics built in and they're, I find, rarely used. 
And so you want to come in here and you want to look at each email that you send and you want to start to get an idea of what are your average open and click through rates. And then when you see an email that's overperforming, that's doing really well, you want to know, you want to think about like what changed, what, what made this more, um, likely to open? Was it the content? Was it your call to action? Uh, was it the design and same through with click throughs now campaign monitor, which is, you know, one of the top sites that talks about, you know, trends and tips inside of, uh, HTML email, they provide, you know, these industry, you know, or, or all, all across industries, what, what these, what good metrics are. So the average open should be between 15 and 20%. So in this case, you can check out this email. It's, it's actually, uh, it's open is about 28%. So that's super good. That said, I would think that most churches should really be doing much better than these averages that campaign monitors doing because our data is first party data. So it all came directly from the people who are receiving it. Uh, in general, churches should have high engagement more so than like an e-commerce site. Um, and, and generally our, our, our lists are pretty well groomed. It's easy to unsubscribe. Uh, so, um, this was a kind of a mass email out to like 18,000 people. So that might say why 28% is actually a decent number. But if you sent a smaller email out to 500 or a thousand, you'd probably want that open to be a higher. And I think it would probably would be. The average click-through rate should be, you know, 2.5%. In this case, we're at 17.6. So that's fantastic. That's really good. And then they have another metric here, which is click to open. So um, how many clicks did you get for people who actually opened it? And so that number should always, of course, be higher. Uh, Rock doesn't currently have that metric, um, but I think that's one that we that would be nice to see in the future. Okay, so know your, your analytics. It's good to know these industry standards, but you should know what your standards are and what your averages are, and then try to figure out like what's performing well and what's not. And so then another thing that we did is we kind of looked at some of the emails that um, Cedar Creek has sent out in the past, and they asked us to kind of, you know, give us some suggestions. Um, you know, first up, we, I think we could, you know, start out with a, a better template. Um, I don't think this template is bad, but I think there's some, you know, fairly low hanging fruit that we can make this template look better. Um, but outside of the template, a few things that, you know, I, looking at this, I would recommend uh, first up in the image, you know, generally it's, it's best not to include details because sometimes someone might have the images turned off and then therefore wouldn't see the details. Now in this case, it's not a huge deal because um, they were smart and put that, those details in text down here, but I would still say it'd be better to keep it out of here and, and, and use this space here for the animation. Um, get the wow around this. Um, the other thing I would recommend is, is making sure that every email has a very strong call to action, um, whether it be a button, like maybe register should be a, a big button here. Um, I'd also probably put a little bit more spacing in the template uh, between the the image and the text. And if you don't have a strong call to action, you can always highlight and bold the person's name more. Um, you know, psychologists tell us that the, a person's favorite word in the English language is their name. So showing it up real, real big, hi Ted, is gonna really engage um, their eye and go, hey, this is personalized, this person knows who I am. And of course here, I'm just showing you the template, so it would, really would say Ted there. But overall, I mean, the graphic design of these um, images at the top are, you know, top notch. And I think that is going to be very engaging for folks. Um, but uh, always room for improvement. I'd also recommend in general that you have a general use template that you don't create a whole bunch of, um, you know, templates that for every single event, just get one general use template and then maybe a few other alternatives um, and put even a graphic right into the template so they know to change the, the graphic and, and that it's there. Now, one caveat to this, you know your staff best. If you feel like that you might be in danger of someone sending it out with this, you know, placeholder image, you know, then maybe don't do that. Have a separate template for everything. But I generally hope that if you make this picture as ugly as this one shows that they know um, what to do. But 
you can have what I call template fatigue if you have like many, 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 many um, templates. Um, you want to kind of reduce that because people get overwhelmed. And some options to do that is first off, organize um, your templates into categories. And so you have this category filter, so it's very easy to um, pick a category. Slight problem with that is like the default is not is to show all categories. So you you kind of start with the fatigue. Um, so a way around that is to limit the templates that a person can see through security. So each template can be secured and you can control who can see it. And when you talk about template security, it's not so much about like permissions. I don't, you know, you're not allowed to see it. It's more that, you know, you don't need to see it. So I'm going to hide it from you just so you don't get fatigued and, and have to worry about these and have to scan through them. Now you might say on number two here, wow, it's a, you know, it's a lot of work to kind of go to each one of those templates and to secure it. And if that ever has to change, it's kind of a pain because I might have, you know, 20 of those and I have to go do that. Realize that you can control the security on the category. And so that hides, you know, large swaths of these templates in a single um, uh, setting. And so if you hide that template, it won't show up in the category filter. And on that list of all of them, it hides it from that too. So that, that is a great tip. Number three, change the security on the category. Okay, again, I just want to give a shout out and a real huge thanks to Cedar Creek Church for allowing us uh, to invest a little extra time into making this presentation something that's shareable and for definitely allowing us to, to share it out and for the, allowing the whole Rock community to, to learn from the engagement they had uh, with Triumph. So thanks again.